Hey, how you doing? Welcome back to Vinny the Axe. Well, I'm back home in Florida. It was a long trip from California. Got in late last night, but I decided to do a little, I guess, post NAM review. So I wanted to go over a few things um, about the NAM show. One, um, it was really good. It was fantastic. I had a really great time. Big shout out right out of the gate here to the Studio Rats. Uh, super cool guys. Got to hang with them. They showed me around a bit and um, just really, really nice guys. So before I go into what was at the show, let's go into what was not at the show. So Gibson was not at the show. Fender was not at the show. Paul Reed Smith was not at the show. Kiesel was not at the show. So these are some of the things that I wanted to see, and um, they weren't there. And I think, I don't know if there's politics involved with the NAM organization. I don't know what's going on there. I know it costs those companies a lot of money to bring employees out there to pay them the whole time while they're out there. I'm sure hotels for each employee, and I'm sure all the equipment to have it trucked and shipped and, and, and all, that, all that jazz. However, that being said is I don't understand why... And, and I don't understand, that's why I'm saying this. I don't understand why they can't just do a smaller booth. Why do they have to have a huge monstrosity of a display? You know, I know they're the monstrosity businesses of the guitar world, but you know what? Don't have a huge display then if you want to save some coin, right? They obviously are making money. If they didn't make any money, the, the company wouldn't exist, right? I'm sure there's executives that have, I don't know, cars that cost more than my whole life worth, right? So... You know, um, get a smaller booth. Put a smaller booth up. You know, bring only the new guitars that you released for 2024. Bring those. Don't bring the whole entourage of stuff. You don't have to bring every master-built custom shop that's $12,000 with you. Don't bring it. Bring one. Bring two. You know, bring some of the new models that you have and do a smaller booth. You know what I mean? You know, quality versus quantity, right? Um, same thing with Paul Reed Smith. They came out with um, the new Tele design that they have. They came out with a whole new line for 2024. You know, just bring a couple of samples. Be there. I don't know. It's it's almost kind of, I know they're saving money, but at the same same token, you have people that want to see you, right? So, I don't know, make an effort. I made an effort to go out there. I'm nobody, and it cost me um, a lot of money to go out there, right? So, you know, sometimes you got to you gotta do things that uh, hurt the wallet a little bit, right? But it would have been nice to see them out there. Would have been um, It would have been cool. You know, Gibson, same thing. You know, Gibson's always, you know, in some kind of lawsuit, debacle. They're pissed off at another company. Whatever's going on, man, right? Sometimes their quality control ain't all up to snuff. I can tell you that. I've owned many of them from Murphy Labs on down with issues, right? So bring some of your best stuff out there. Don't bring it all. Just bring some of it. That's my opinion. I may not know all this stuff. I'm not a, an owner of a multi-million or billion dollar company, but um, I would just say... Smaller booth, tiny booth, a couple of employees, few guitars. You know, I think it would be better than nothing, but what the hell do I know, right? Um, Kiesel, I know, did their own thing. They had their own, like, open house or whatever because, you know, okay, cool. But it would have been nice to see them at the show. It would have been cool. And I know, I know it cost them a lot of money. And, again, I don't know if there's political stuff in the background that's motivating all this, like maybe a big company boycott or whatever. I, I have no idea. So let's go on to the let's go on to the good of the uh, of the show. I met a lot of nice, really nice people there. Um, uh, yeah, I ran into Andy Timmons, talked to him for a few minutes. He's a super nice guy, really cool. Uh, I ran into Larry Mitchell, talked to him for a few minutes. What a really just humble and just amazing player, man. I was just totally thrilled to watch him not only play live but uh, to actually talk to him afterwards. I ran into Ola England. I really dig his channel. And I'm not so much of a metal player anymore, but um, I just, I just, I, something about the guy, I just like the guy. Anyway, he chatted with me for a good five minutes or so. Was super nice guy. Um, just ran into him in, at the show. Um, Rabir Massad was there. They launched his new signature guitar, which actually was in the Ernie Ball booth, and it looked really nice. That was a really nice looking guitar. I haven't been too thrilled with some of their designs as of late. Um, and I'm not totally into the signature thing. But I have to say, his guitar looked really nice. The bevels and the cutaway on the, on the lower horn looked really, really good. 
Um, that's a that's a guitar I wouldn't mind owning. I, I think that would be a great guitar. I don't know if I would like the pickups. They might be a little bit too modern, but um, I didn't hear it also. I didn't hear the guitar, but it, but it looked really good. Anyway, I actually ran into him at the show, and he was super nice. Got a photo with him. Um, Larry Colton was there with the Sire guitars. <laughs> And he was doing a live demonstration. He pulled a guitar straight off the wall and was playing it. And so I took a look at those Sire guitars. And I know they're inexpensive. And I'm not saying here that they're the greatest guitar in the world. And I don't know if they have any quality control problems as far as plugging them in and playing them. I didn't get a chance to do this. There's so much noise going on at the show that you can't hear anything anyway, half the time. But I did just grab a few of them and looked at some of the fit and finish. And I have to say that the frets were done really well really well and no sharp edges or anything on them. They do have a glossiness to them that makes them look a little bit uh, cheaper. I don't know. I, I can't get my, my head wrapped around it, but there's there's some kind of glossiness to them in the finishing that makes them look a little bit, uh, I don't know. But that being said, for the price point, um, and like I said, he pulled one off the wall and was playing it sounded killer. So, you know, there you have it. Um, I stopped at the Novo booth. Um, Novo redesigned their Solus guitar, and it looks really, really nice. I owned the previous one. It was really cool, and uh, they just changed the shape of it a little bit, and the finishes that they had on display were really, really nice. So that's, um, that's something to look at. Also, uh, Nick Huber was there with his Krauster 3. They changed the body shape of the Krauster, and I liked the way it looked. It looked pretty cool. It's almost like what the Krauster used to look like, if you're familiar with that guitar, and the Dolphin. They kind of had like some crazy baby. Um, that's what the Krausters kind of shape like. Uh, but really nice guitar. Matter of fact, all his guitars like sold, I think, in another 24 hours. The ones he had on display, they were already accounted for by dealers or whomever. Uh, another big display, and I didn't really get too much footage of it, was this Cream Guitars. They had this huge pink display with mannequins. In one of my videos where I do day one, you could see some of it on display. They do this like acrylic top, and they like put stuff inside the acrylic and then pour it, you know? So they had like stuff with like sequins and, um, you know, pieces of material. There was, there was ones with like, like shirt buttons all inside of it. And the bodies were like a radical shape. They look kind of cool, but at the same token, I noticed that there was a lot of tooling marks and scuff marks around the edges of the guitar, which are like a, a satiny kind of finish, and the top is just glossy. So I don't know if it was something in transport or or it is tooling tooling marks from the factory. I'm not really sure, uh, but they had a lot of people in that booth, and they had different types of pickups, and um, I don't know. It was one of those things. It was like kind of like one of those, wow, like look at those things, but yet... I don't know if it was something that I would really want to own. I'd have to play one to try it out to give you an actual real review or assessment. If they want to send me one, that would be great, and then I could play it, and I can go through it and see what it actually sounds like and how it plays. Um, what else? I'm looking at some... I'm referring to some notes here because I wrote a whole bunch of stuff down. Uh, Sully Guitars. I stopped in and did a... If you check out my, check out my channel, I did a, a, uh, an interview with Sully Guitars. And uh, those guitars look really nice. They look really well built. The fit and finish look really nice in them. And the guy was uh, Sully, the owner of the company. He was a, he was a blast to, to talk to. Uh, Blue guitar, the effects processor that is all in one. It's an amplifier effects all in one unit. Um, I did an interview with that. It's also on the channel. That thing sounded like a real tube amplifier. It literally sounded like it had the tube sag and everything. I didn't get my hands on it to play it. So I can't say about the feel, but I could tell you that I think it sounded like a real tube amp. I wouldn't have been able to tell the difference blindfolded. And when he was playing it, he was getting all kinds of feedback and stuff from it and everything. It was, it was just um, really cool to hear in person. I was really impressed with that. Uh, Paoletti guitars out of Italy. Uh, I really like their guitars. I know they're, the wood's made out of um, chestnut from aged wine barrels or whatever, but they look cool. They, if you're not into the relic thing, probably not your bag but they have a nice worn finish and the fit and finish was really nice on those. As a guitar player, I was warned about going into the drum section and uh, holy God, that was loud. It sounded like 18,000 marching bands all playing a different song at the same time. I just happened to wander in there to use the restroom, one of the non-so-busy restrooms where there was no line and I, I kind of paid for it. 
<laughs> I love drummers and stuff, but but man, um, it was it was kind of nutty. Uh, you know what to expect when you go there. I I can tell you that if you've never been, it is really cool to go. If you live far away, it's an expense. I will tell you the first few aisles were full of builders um, from Asian origin and. They had like all these different types of guitars that they were, I guess, manufacturers. So I guess I'm assuming that if you wanted to, if I wanted to start my own Vinnie the Axe guitar, guitar line, I would contact one of these companies and have them build this stuff for me. You know what I mean? And um, I don't know. They didn't look so awesome. I, I don't know. And there were a lot of weird name brands that I just didn't even bother filming uh, really or paying attention to. I, I kind of looked at some of them. They look pretty, they look pretty whatever it wasn't anything thrilling to be to be quite honest with you um, a lot of pedal manufacturers there I got to see surfy bear and also did a interview with them uh, and it's on the channel if you want to check it out surfy bear was really cool and so if you're looking for a reverb pedal and you really want like a proper reverb and your amp doesn't have a proper reverb um, they have different size tanks in a little pedal and you can make the adjustments and I got to play one and it sounded really really cool you can you can change the dwell on it so you can get a nice reverb but yet it's kind of like not so much in the mix um, really cool stuff if you get a chance check them out too they were they're really cool if you're into that kind of thing obviously if you're playing with full drive you know on your amplifier and you plug that in the front of it it's I don't think it's gonna jive well it's I don't think it's really for that and it's not just for surf I know it's called surfy bear but you know it's if you want it, if you want a nice authentic sounding reverb pedal that's probably your best bet to grab to, to grab one of those uh, other than that the place was busy and it is huge it is absolutely huge I don't know if I caught everything sometimes I try to use the directory that was on the app it led me in the wrong directions or I was in somewhat of the right direction or an area but it wasn't exactly laid out like it said on the map um, but there's so many vendors and so many people there it's just uh, it, it's like it's like 15 concerts just let out and everybody's milling around. But I have to say, I was expecting it to be super loud. And I know they have like the loud police that walks around and monitors the decibel levels from each booth. Uh, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all. I didn't have to wear earplugs or anything like that. It really was all right. The Ernie Ball booth was super busy. I couldn't even get anywhere near in there. I got in there once and it was just packed full of people. And it's, it was a very small booth. So I would say maybe... Um, the booth was maybe a little bit bigger than this room I'm in, and this room is like 25 feet by 12, so it was probably double, double the size maybe, but in a square, if that makes any sense. And uh, it was just packed. They had, the guitars were actually on the outside walls around the perimeter, and some inside, and they had some demos, um, some artists come in. I was about three feet from John Petrucci, but there was a line to, to meet him, and he was signing autographs or whatever. Uh, but he was there. There was there was a ton of people there, and it was um it was a good experience. I was happy I went, and um, you know I probably will go next year as well and get some more interviews with some more companies. Hopefully, you know it'll change and some of the bigger makers will actually show up. I, I like I said I don't know what's going on behind the scenes with all that. I'm not privy to that kind of stuff. I don't own a Fortune 500 company or anything crazy, so I don't know all the ins and outs. All I know is is that if a smaller company can afford a small booth, then they can afford a small booth. And, you know, just do that. Nick Huber was there. I met him. Nice guy. And he had like, I think, six or eight guitars on a, on a, on a you know, area, on a table in the boutique, kind of close to the boutique section. So why not just do that, man? Bring, you know, some of your stuff out and come out and represent. I don't know. It would be cool. It'd be cool for a person like me who wants to go there and, and see the stuff. And then, you know, it's, it's not there. You know, I don't know what the future holds for Nam. I heard that it was fantastic pre-COVID. I've never had a chance to go pre-COVID, so when all the big makers were there. So it is what it is. I'm glad I got the chance to go. There was a really, really a lot of cool stuff I got to see and a lot of cool pedals and effects that were there and demo. There was a newcomer called Valhalla Amplifiers out of England. They sounded really good. Um, you know, I, I didn't get a chance to play on one, So, but the, from what I heard of the demos, it sounded pretty cool, very Marshall-like. Um, type of amplifiers. Uh, there was uh, quite a bit of, quite a lot of companies there and a lot of people and a lot of manufacturers of effects and pedals and such. Uh, same thing with like Strymon. Strymon was there. I met some of the people that work for Strymon. They were fantastic people, super, super nice, but they didn't have any pedals. It was like several 
guys or a few guys on a couch, you know, with some swag. And uh, they were lovely, again, lovely to talk to, super cool, but they didn't have anything on display. It would have been nice if they would have took all their pedals and strung them in some kind of really crazy pedal board setup, you know, and just have it set up with all the lights blinking, maybe to one amplifier and then get like an artist to show up, like one or two of your artists, have them come out and play a couple times during the day and um, demo the pedals at least. I mean, I, I don't know. That, that's just me. I, I, like I said, I, w- what the hell do I know? I'm just thinking that if I was going to bring my, my company out there and this is me, and again, I don't own a company, so maybe I'm missing something here. If I was going to have my own company and I own effects pedals, I'd bring a few pedals out and maybe have a couple of endorsey people or not. If, you know, if you're capable and you own the company and you could play, then, then you demo it. I mean, I don't know. It's better to have something than, than, than nothing. It's kind of like a car dealership with no cars. You walk in there and it's just a salesman. You got to deal with him and you don't even get to see the car. <laughs> I don't know. Then again, again, what the hell do I know? So anyway, I really appreciate you tuning in. If you have any questions about NAM or anything, leave them in the comments because there's so much to go over. It was such a, a sensory overload and a barrage of just stuff that, um, I could probably talk all day about it. So like I said, if you have any questions, put it in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. This way you stay up to date on the new videos that are coming out in the future. You know, hit the like button, helps out the channel. And once again, this is Vinny the Axe. It's great scene, Nam, and hope to see it again next year. Take it easy.